Hi, this is Duncan from Seamaster Training Centre and in this session we're going to be looking at using the Portland Plotter. Now the first thing that we need to um, understand when we're using the Portland Plotter is that this direction arrow for the direction of bearing or our heading needs to be pointing in the direction that we're going in. And you can hopefully see on the chart here that we have a fix here and a waypoint here. The fix taken at 12.30 and with a log reading of 8.5 miles and the waypoint outside of Colville maybe for our approach into the harbour there. And to take the heading from that we would need to take or we'd need to sail or motor down from our fix to the waypoint what we're going to do is that we're going to place our plotter onto the chart and I'm going to Put my pencil in the middle of the fix so I can use this just to line things up and I'm going to ensure firstly that this arrow is pointing in the direction that we're taking the heading in. I'm then going to use the adjustable compass rose here. I'm going to move this, let's check I'm lined up again, and I'm going to line one of the lines here, either the vertical or horizontal lines up on the movable compass rows. I'm going to line those up as it is here with that um, that line of, of longitude there. Make sure that's nice and parallel and then I can come to the zero point on the plotter and read off my heading there which is 280 degrees true. It's coming from the, the chart so it's true and hopefully you can all see that. Let me move my notepad up a little bit so that you can see what I'm writing down there as well. 280 degrees true with that. Let's take another um, heading over here, we'll move the compass and the dividers. Let's say that I'm in my known position here, my fix, and I want to be aware of what the bearing is to this headland over here. I'm going to put the plotter onto the chart and line the edge of the plotter up from my fix to this headland that I want to be um, aware of. And I'm going to be sure that the direction arrow is pointing in the direction I'm going to take the bearing in and then I'm going to rotate the movable compass rows again and I'm going to line one of these lines up with one of the lines either of uh, latitude or longitude on the chart. I have one lined up there and I can take this off here and I can tell you that the bearing from the fix to this light here or this headland with the light on it is 126 degrees true. Again it's from the chart. One more just to be sure that we're happy with everything we're doing. Let's have a look at Old Chapel Head light down here. Let's go from our fix again down to the light. I'm making sure that the direction is right on there and then I'm going to rotate my compass rows. Just move that down a little bit so that I'm over this line over here. Nicely lined up over there. I'm going to come to zero on here and I can read off my heading as being 193 degrees true 193 degrees true so I hope that's okay and quite simple for you for using the Portland plotter to take headings and bearings uh, to things and just to, to recap and be sure everything that comes off the chart is in true as well for us to see there now you'll see on the chart what I'm going to try and do um, and you may have to just uh, let's see how can we see that we can see this information here on the compass rows the compass rows on the chart is used to give us our directions and bearings around the 360 degrees of the circle and it also tells us what the variation is in an area here and this information on the chart here is telling us that variation is 7 degrees and 25 minutes west in 2005 excuse me 2005 and that it's moving eight minutes every year and that's how the, the variation is expressed on the chart over here so a few things to be aware of we can only work with variation to whole degrees we can't work to half degrees and what we do is that we round up to the nearest degree or round down as we will in this case because we have um, 60 minutes in a degree 25 minutes is closer to 7 than it is to 8 so at 7 degrees 25 we round it down to 7 degrees if it was 7 degrees 35 we would round it up 
two, eight, and work with eight degrees. Now, when we're applying variation, this actually um, tells us here the variation for 2005. And in a moment, we're going to do some examples using variation and assuming that it is 2005. Um, we know at the time of making this video, it's actually 2012. So the seven years passed um, since this variation was taken at 725 in 2005. So I have to make a correction to make variation correct for 2012. And how I do that is I use this figure here. And what I forgot to add there, which was a very bad thing for me to do, that the, the alteration that um, the difference between true and magnetic north was moving um, in an easterly direction at eight minutes per year. So if, if you can uh, imagine that we have true north and magnetic north and the relationship between the two is changing in this position on the planet here by eight degrees in an easterly, easterly direction every year. So to make this figure here right for 2012, I need to make a seven year correction, that, that being the difference between 2005 and 2012. Seven eighths of 56 minutes. So what it's saying is that over the seven years that have passed, that magnetic north has moved to the east by 56 minutes. And going to the east here is going to mean that we're going to take the 56 minutes off this figure here. And 7 degrees 25 minutes minus 56 minutes will give us 6 degrees and 29 minutes in 2012. And that works out as being as so because there is only 60 minutes in a degree. So if we take 56 minutes from 725, we end up with 629 in 2012. And we would actually then work in 2012, we would work to variation equals six degrees rather than as we were working in 2005, variation equaled seven degrees. That's just how we keep things up to date with variation. Now let's have a look at what we might do to make 280 degrees true into a magnetic bearing or heading even. Let's say a heading so that we can steer the ship to it with the magnetic ship's compass. And we have, let's do it in 2005 with seven degrees of west. So westerly variation, variation equals seven degrees west. And what happens here with a westerly variation, we're going to have a little thing when working from true there to magnetic. We're going to put a little arrow going that way. And we're going to say that when we have west, we're going to add a westerly variation working from true to magnetic. So in adding a westerly variation, 280 degrees true, that would be plus seven degrees of westerly variation would be 287 degrees magnetic. Let's put our European bits on there, shall we? 287 magnetic. Let's say in this instance that variation equaled 10 degrees east. We're still working from true to magnetic. When we work from true to magnetic with easterly variation, this way again, easterly we minus, we take off. So this can actually mean to a nice little saying that works quite good for us, that west is best and the east is least. West is best, east is least when working from true, from a paper chart to magnetic to a compass uh, heading or bearing. So if I have one, two, six with an easterly variation, easterly vari variation in there, I'm going to take the 10 degrees off that and I'm going to end up with 116 degrees magnetic to um, either ask the ship to steer to or to um, apply for a bearing that was taken. Let's go back down here to 2012 now and let's say that variation here equals our six degrees west. West is best, 193 plus six is going to be 199 degrees magnetic. Hope that works for you. There's also a very, very um, good part on the plotter that we can use to 
to um, help us with variation when we're applying variation either way actually but let's still go from true to magnetic from the chart to the compass hope you can see this plotter there okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial my original 280 degrees back into the movable compass rows over here so 280 degrees at zero on the the plotter here we have error scales both to the west and to the east and we use this scale to apply variation and something called deviation that we'll talk about later if I were to add our seven degrees or just to mark off our seven degrees of westerly variation on here I can come down to the main scale and read off and it will tell me that 280 degrees true with seven degrees of westerly variation will give me a magnetic heading of 287 degrees 287 degrees so that works very well for us doesn't it let's do the second one again on here I find that for people this makes it quite clear for people to do 126 degrees true with a 10 degree easterly variation gives us a magnetic heading of 116 degrees magnetic 116 magnetic the last one 193 193 degrees true with a variation of six degrees west gives us a magnetic heading of 199 degrees magnetic I hope that works well for you and I hope you can all see that in the, the scale there. I hope I haven't held it out of shot or else I'll be, I'll be very annoyed with myself. But that's a great way of checking things and, and initially whilst you're learning to navigate I think it's a real good way of, of doing things um, from the beginning to get your feet on the ground with it. Hope you enjoyed that and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.